Hi everyone, uh, welcome to uh, the Lowdown interview. Uh, tonight we have Heather Amy Bevers, who is a strength coach and who has a whole lot of experience working with people, and in particular young people, and, and helping people become uh, all that they can be and kind of reach their potential and use their God-given gifts. And we also have uh, Chriselle, who's part of our youth team at Windsor, and uh, we work alongside each other. And so we're going to be uh, sharing a little bit about our strengths and how they work together uh, but for the most part, Heather's going to be kind of sharing how Strength Finders work, uh, works and uh, just, yeah, discussing that with us. Uh, so, Heather, I'll let you introduce yourself and uh, you can go into like a bit of a, a debrief uh, around what a Strength Finders is and how it works. And then I'll kind of let you take uh, take it from there. Okay. Thank you very much, Ethan. Um, so, yeah, my name is Heather Amy Bevis. Um, I've been at Windsor Park for 23 years. Wow. Um, before that, I'm from Wellington, that gorgeous cold place down in the uh, bottom of the North Island. And um, I first of all trained as a, as a primary school teacher, but was just passionate about youth work. I loved it, particularly working with um, young people who weren't part of churches. And we ran clubs based around high schools. I met my gorgeous husband there. He's a hunk of a man called Alan Amy and um, had two kids, uh, Luke, who was a, a leader at Windsor Park for many, many years, and Anna, um, and she um, was in the youth group there. And we were the youth pastors for 11 years at Windsor Park and um, loved it. Such good memories. And, uh, and know lots of your parents or big brothers and sisters and all that kind of stuff. But... Um, actually moved into Baptist Youth Ministries National and uh, I run a whole lot of training like Queen's Birthday Weekends. I organise and oversee the Fiji short-term mission trips. I do the training for youth pastors and um, something called Discovery Internship. In fact, my great claim to fame is that Manaya Huakau and <laughs> Zoe Murray were in my Discovery Internship last year. That the pinnacle of my life was that, really. Um, but I'm also pretty passionate about some other stuff. I work for gender equity for Baptist women leaders. And um, I also do something on the side called strength coaching, which is also what, what I'm here to talk to you about tonight. Um, I guess the broad overstretch or sort of overview of all that is that um, I just think people are so fascinating. Each of us is completely unique. And God has wired us um, for, for, for good things. And you look at someone and go, wow, you are so interesting. I wonder what makes you tick. And the great thing about strengths is it helps us understand how we tick. Um, and and Chriselle is nodding there underneath because <laughs> we both share a strength called developer. And we both find people fascinating. <laughs> Ethan doesn't have that strength, no. But, um, <laughs> I don't um, find people interesting at all. <laughs> don't like people. Um, me and me and Chriselle both look at people and go, "How can we grow you? How can we help you step up to be more than what you are now?" You know. So um, that is that is something about strengths. And yeah, I I really believe there's a great verse in Ephesians two ten, and it says, "We are God's God's craftsmanship. He's created us for good works in advance." But lots and lots of people um, are like, well, I, I want to do what God's made me to do. You know, I want to have meaning and purpose. Everybody does. We, we're wired to have meaning and purpose. But the thing is, like, I, I, how am I gifted? How am I different? I don't feel any different. I, yeah, don't understand. And I, what I love about strengths or strengths finder is it's a way for you to discover how you're wired, how you think, how you work, how you operate. And, yeah, how you can step into what God has gifted you to do. There's obviously spiritual gifts that's different, but these enhance your spiritual gifts and um, give you a, a much better knowledge about how you can be all that God's made you to be. So that's our quest for life is asking God that question, Lord, what are you calling me to? What are you asking me to step into in this season of my life? And strengths really helps us understand that and helps us understand each other better as well. So, yeah, it's a two-way street, really. But I've got a question for you, Ethan. Um, my question is, like, you've had some brilliant topics. I've loved the Sunday night. So I'm a secret squirrel sitting there every um, Sunday listening and, and enjoying what's going on. But you have chosen this out of all the amazing topics you could have chosen. 
why is it that you think it's important that people um, understand their strengths? Yeah, it's a good question. And um, I just realised I forgot to say Happy Mother's Day. So Happy Mother's <laughs> Day to Heather and any other mothers that are watching. Um, yeah, so I totally forgot about that. I did my Mother's Day thing yesterday. Um, yeah, why did I want to talk about strengths? I think for me, uh, I did Strength Finders probably probably about eight or nine years ago now. And, um, and it helped me in a, a number of different ways. And probably... I'll just go through a couple of them. One of the biggest things I think Strength Finders does, it helps you become really self-aware, uh, not just in the things that you're really gifted in and the things that you're good at, but also the the kind of the shadow side of that, the, the side where, um, you know, your strengths can also cause some difficulties in your life, and, and I'll probably touch a little bit on that later. Um, but what I've found is that when I um, – the more I've understood strength finders and other personality sort of tests and um, different tools that kind of uh, teach us about ourselves, um, it's helped me understand myself better and it's helped me understand other people better. And in my context in ministry, I think that's super, super important. Uh, but I think it's important for anyone. Um, it's important for our, our friendships, for our, our relationships, um, for our, our work colleagues, kind of everything. And so... Um, to me, like, why wouldn't you want to equip yourself? And one of the things that I often, it's kind of my tagline now, is um, I like to say the best investment you can ever make is one in yourself. And so I'm like, this is just one of the many ways you can do that. that but I think personally, I found strengths, uh, find it really helpful uh, for myself. Um, the, the second thing that I found is there was things that I've always been good at in my life, but I never really considered them a strength. I used to just think of it as, oh, why aren't other people good at that? And then I kind of realized, I was like, oh, that's just me. You know, that, that is a thing that I am gifted with. Uh, but it's also helped me to understand uh, other people's giftings where I probably wouldn't have thought about it as being a gifting and, and just seeing how um, different strengths can play out and how. And um, so what I've found is that as I've flattered with people and as I've worked with people, um, there's things that can sometimes frustrate me, but then there's things that I've also really, really appreciated. And um, a, like one example of that is uh, an old flatmate of mine. He had the, the strength of positivity. And naturally, I'm quite a critical person. Uh, and oh, I can talk about my strengths a little bit later, but there's reasons for that. And he just made me live in the present. You know, he made me enjoy things. He, he made me think about things in a, a much lighter sort of a way. And, and that really rubbed off on me, uh, especially living with him and, and kind of working and doing and youth leading beside him as well. And so, yeah, I think in my life it's had a huge influence. And, you know, I, I'm all about um, wanting to see others grow. Might not have developer, uh, but I don't know. I love to see people grow in their face <laughs> of God and in their character and become all that they can be. So, yeah, hopefully that asks, answers your question a little bit there. No, that's great. It's so. really, really cool. Yeah. And, and the reason I've got Ethan and Chriselle here is because they're actually two really strong advocates for strengths. And Chriselle has really stepped into her strengths and uh, really pushed them to them. Um, she was telling me before that um, some of her friends just get sick of her talking about strength. <laughs> and she's trying to encourage them and she's trying to grow them, you know. But so later on, I'm just going to go through some facts about strengths that hopefully you'll find helpful. But um, then uh, I'm going to actually ask Ethan and Chriselle about their strengths. And then I'm going to ask them about um, how they work as a team because they've actually got very different strengths, you know. <laughs> They're in very different places. But actually in a team, that's super helpful. So, yeah, um, Ethan, could you swap me over to the slides? That would be great. I can. I'll give it a shot. Hopefully it goes smoothly. Yeah. A oh, wrong person. I'll take me off. <laughs> Yeah, as gorgeous as uh, Ethan is. Okay, I'm going to try and get to the right side of this. Here we go. Hey, uh, no, yeah, back, 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 to right to the beginning. Thanks, Ethan. I can't control it. Ethan's in control. So one more back, Ethan. Thank you very much. Hey, um, so this is um, Clifton Strength Finder. And Clifton was a guy who was an educational psychologist. And uh, probably about 50 years ago now, <laughs> he was uh, a young guy just starting out. And he was really engaged with... Um, what they call, I'm trying to get to the right side of this, here we go. Um, he was trying to get involved with some kids who really needed help with reading. And so he 
He went to the classroom. Um, they were they were not doing so well with comprehension. And he was supposed to get the little kids that were struggling. And the teacher left him with the whole class. And he was like, okay. So he taught the, the skills to the whole class. And he was blown away that the kids um, that were struggling got better. But the kids that were already naturally good at reading got exponentially bigger, uh, better. Um, and uh, he went... Wow, it was a seed thought for why do we focus on our weaknesses and spend so much time on, on trying to get better where we struggle? Why don't we just focus on the fact that we are good at something and become really good at that? And so that's um, what he spent the next few years doing. He spent the next few years looking and researching what are the strengths that people have and how can I help them grow those? So, um, Ethan, could you swap to the next one, please? It would be great. Um, so yeah, the thing I love about strengths is it's a gift. And when you're using your strengths, when you know them and you're using them, there's a whole lot of joy around using them. There's a whole lot of um, energy that you get when you're focused and, and, and stepping into, into using those and using those things that you are naturally wired for. Um, but uh, the hard thing is a whole lot of people don't actually understand that. You know, um, the Bible says, um, which I love, is, is, is in Ephesians uh, 2.10 that we are created um, ahead as his workmanship. And it also says in Psalm 139, Lord, you created me in my mother's womb. And it is too wonderful knowledge for me to understand. God has wired us and gifted us and shaped us. And we're all, we're all very, very different. What I love is no one has your fingerprint. No one has your um, voice print. No one has your DNA. And no one has your crazy sense of humor um, or your weird way of dressing. No, um, we're all so <laughs> very, very different. Um, but there is, for each of us, you know, um, uh, created, as it says in Ephesians 2.10, for, for uh, his purposes. So how do I discover what those are? And we have to do a bit of work, you know. Um, Ethan, as he said before, his, his tagline is that we need to discover more about ourselves and invest in ourselves. And so strength is an investment in yourself to understand yourself, but it's not just for you. And that's what I love about this. This is um, some sort of reflection of, of Corinthians 12 um, when it talks about the fact that each of us uh, as part of the body of Christ, and we each have a, a unique role to play. And um, we're not all the foot, we're not all the heart, we're not all the toe. Together we make up the body of Christ. And so, um, yeah, it is taking the time and saying, okay, so God, how have you strengthened me? How can I grow my strengths? How can I step into these? And, um, uh, and, and how can I use them to help other people? It's not just about me. It's not just about how I can... Um, have the joy for myself. Uh, as I step into maturity, it's about how do I help other people. So next one, thanks, Ethan. That'd be great. So yeah, this is um, uh, the Clifton Strength Finder, and there are actually 34 themes or talents that have been um, are discovered. And when you have a look at that, they've been researched over 30 years and across six continents. So that's um, it's not dependent on culture. Um, and I find that fascinating. And uh, if we had a bit more time, I could tell you some more about that. But yeah, it's a whole lot of research. Um, next one, thanks, Ethan. Um, we operate out of our top 10. So um, what that means is, yes, we have all 34 strengths that come out, but we actually spend most of our time operating out of our top 10. And so that to discover your strengths, you need to do a, um, an online test that identifies those top five, and then you get coached in those top five. You can certainly discover your full 34 after that, but um, your top five is your initial way in of learning and growing. And Chriselle and Ethan will be talking about their top five and how they work. And um, what I, I really, really love is that if you have a look here, that there is your top five, um, uh, one person in 2,078,000 2, has your top five, but actually in the same order that you have them, one in 33,390,000. And that again shows the unique way that God has wired you. And that um, when you look at, look at your strengths and understand them, you bring something to the table that nobody else brings. And that makes you invaluable. 
uh, and not just to yourself, but to all of us. So just the next one, thanks, Ethan. That's great, friend. So, yes, yeah, strengths help us to work out who we are and they describe us and our uniqueness. So what that means is that um, they influence our choices and they influence the way we affect the way we think and they direct our actions. So um, your strengths may be very, very different to somebody else's. So, for example, there's a strength that Grant Harris has it's, and Ethan has it as well, um, futuristic. They love to think about the future. What's going on in the future? Where are we going? What's God calling us to? I spend a lot of time thinking about where it is we're going and how we're going to get there. Um, but there's another strength called context. And they actually spend a lot of time thinking about the past. How did we get here? Why are we here? What happened in, in my past and my history and my family to, to help me be here? And uh, how do we keep remembering where we've come from so that we can celebrate how we got here and not make the mistakes of the past? So those are two very different strengths. And so it helps us understand how we think differently. One's not right, one's not wrong, one's not better, one's not worse. They're just different. And in a team and in a body of Christ, those differences really help us as we work together. And I, I love the fact that um, I do not have all 34. I need you and you need me. And I need to keep talking to you and asking for your help. And you need to be helping me and asking for mine. You need to celebrate my strengths as much as I celebrate yours. And um, it's in doing that that uh, we get to really appreciate and, and continue, as, as it says, to love one another. And uh, uh, here's an example of some people's strengths and how they work. Uh, jo Harris, uh, Grant's wife, has got a strength called Includer. <laughs> and Includer is a bit of a laugh. Um, because it's a gorgeous strength where they just want to draw people in. They want people to feel part of something, to belong. And I remember um, I'd just done Joe's strengths as a, as a coach. We were sitting talking in the cafe, having a cup of tea after church. And uh, I was just chatting away with Joe, and suddenly she disappeared on me. She was gone. No, no, no word, no uh, Heather, I'm blah, blah, blah. And uh, I look around, and she's seen somebody by themselves. And she's gone off to spend some time with them and make them feel part. And uh, that's just her beautiful included strength, bringing them in, listening to them, making feel like they're part of the body of Christ. And that is just gorgeous. My sister Sharon, she had a strength called, uh, she has a strength called strategic, but she didn't know she had it. And strategic sees a problem and then goes through all the options to find the best way forward. And... Uh, as soon as she knew she had that strength, she could see the wide picture and then focus on the problems to where they needed to go and then find steps to get there. As soon as she knew she had that strength, she pushed into it and she gave herself confidence around her jobs, around her relationships that she hadn't had before. So that understanding helped her to be better in just almost every area of her life. And she celebrates knowing that now it's made a difference. Um, my gorgeous husband, Alan, has a strength called analytical. And what I love about that analytical strength is that um, if you're sitting talking to him about something, he will ask you hard questions. He will analyze what, what you're doing and um, see the detail that I don't see because he thinks differently than I do. And in seeing that detail, and asking you those questions, he helps you clarify and make better decisions. And so, yeah, strengths together, um, they just help us to, to support one another, to understand ourselves, and to be the best that God's made us to be. So next slide. Thank you, um, Ethan. This is um, what they call the four quadrants of, of Strength Finder. So all of the 34 strengths fit into these four quadrants. So um, here we've got executing, and people with the executing strength like to get things done. They're organized, they want to push into something and pursue it and make sure that um, we're moving on and ticking things off and achieving things. I actually have um, in my top five, three of my strengths are ex executing strengths, and I love to get things done. I love to get busy, and I get really frustrated when other people don't. Um, the uh, next quadrant is called influencing, and the influencing quadrant 
is fantastic in that they help people know how to charge, um, how to speak up, and how to make sure that the team is heard. So they will influence the others. And you can see from those strengths there, um, that's in that quadrant, um, actually Ethan has three in this quadrant here, and he is very good at influencing people um, and does it so well. And the next one, the relationship building quadrant. Um, here we have the themes that have the ability to build strong relationships, hold a team together, and make the team greater than the sum of the individual parts. And I have a look, look at the relationship strengths. Krizel has a whole lot of strengths in this quadrant. And then the last quadrant here is the strategic thinking uh, strengths. So right here, the, these ones are people who help teams consider what could be. They absorb and analyze information that can inform better decisions. And um, in my top five, I have, um, strengths in three of the quadrants, and uh, and these strengths um, in, um, mix up and make me who I am. But they definitely, I definitely have a bent because I have three of my top five in executing to getting things done. Um, and I'm gonna now reveal a deep dark secret of Ethan <laughs> and Krizel. Can I have the next slide, please, um, Ethan? Or maybe not. <laughs> yep. <laughs> um, I, I hope you can see that. It's a little bit small on my screen. Um, screen, but the yellow is um, Ethan and the blue is Chriselle. And as you can see here, um, Chriselle has responsibility in the executing one and the relationship one. She's very strong. She's got empathy, connectedness, individualization, and developer. Um, and each of those um, each of those words have a, a really deep meaning. <laughs> and uh, help you understand who you are and how you function, how you think. Now, Ethan has, has in his top five, has uh, strengths of an influencing belief, woo, which means winning others over, and communication in the influencing area. And, uh, and then in the thinking quadrant, or strategic thinking quadrant, he has futuristic and strategic. As you can see there, in a team, they work together all the time, but in their top five, they don't cross over any quadrants, but they cover all the quadrants. So actually, they make a really good team, and we'll talk about how that is now. So Ethan, you might want to, I don't know, probably maybe get rid of that slide, um, and then <laughs> let's have a conversation. So I've I've um, coached both of you guys, uh, and it was a real pleasure um, to do that. But um, can I start with you, Chriselle? You know, um, just what was it like to be coached? Uh, what is it like to understand your strengths? And what is it like to grow in that understanding? Um, I guess when I first did Strengths Finder, I just, I was so stoked, like just finding out more about myself. Um, but also, like when I got my top five, a lot of the things I was like, wait, doesn't everyone think like this? Like, especially having connectedness as number one. Um, connectedness is kind of a like explained in a short way is like um, the thinking of like there's a reason for everything. And I was like, wait, don't Christians think like this? Doesn't everyone think like this? And so um, it was kind of a, one of those glass shattering moments of like the things that you realize about yourself that are different from other people. Um, but yeah, I guess it just like, I guess it just opened up so much more um, to discovering more about myself and kind of, um, I guess, seeing seeing the shadow sides of my strengths as well, um, which are things that, yeah, I guess, I guess I get caught on a lot. Um, and something that I remember from when you coached me, Heather, um, that I have a couple of um, burnout strengths as well. And so um, having, having that on my shoulders, I was a little bit like, well, that makes sense because I do tend to um, do a lot. And yeah, I guess understanding that and and getting, yeah, getting engaged with myself more and discovering more about myself and growing, I think has just been incredible. Yeah. Awesome, thank you, that's great. How about Ethan, what about you? What's it been like for you to um, discover your strengths, particularly your top five and, and to operate out of those? Yeah, I think when I first did it, I was kind of like, oh, do, do these do these really fit me? And then when I remember having a first meeting with you when I was probably about 19. 
and just kind of walking out of the meeting thinking, oh, wow, this is incredible, you know. Um, so like my one of my top ones is futuristic. And so right from an early age, um, I always thought about the future, years and years and years ahead. And so um, like an example of that, when I was probably about 12 or 13, I told my dad, I said, I'm going to buy my first house by the time I'm 20. Um, that still hasn't happened, but like, that's kind of how I think. I think about, I think, you know, when I was 20, I was thinking about when I was 30 and 40 and so on. Um, when I, um, uh, so another strength of mine is strategic. So one of the things that I um, I do is I think about the end result and then I kind of work backwards from there. And so, um, and, and you'll see this if you play a board game with me. Um, <laughs> like if I play Settlers of Catan or Ticket to Ride, I know I've played with a, a number of people at Windsor and other people. Uh, I normally know if I won a game by probably about, um, about a third of the way through usually because I've already planned it out in my head. And so sometimes I'm like, oh, I don't know if I'm going to get it or not, but like it's kind of on the edge. But when it's going well, I'll, I'll be pretty confident. Um, so it's just funny how they kind of play out. I think of Wu. Um, I used to really struggle when I was young. I used to be like, you know, we're the church. We're supposed to welcome people. We're supposed to love people. Um, why don't people like go and say hello to people? That is just, you just don't do that, you know? And I used to get really like frustrated at people. Um, to be honest, sometimes I still do. I'll, I'll, I'll own it. But, um, but one of the things I realized was it's a lot easier for me than it is for other people. I, I actually enjoy talking to new people. I, I love finding out how people tick um, and kind of their background and their experience and all that sort of stuff. And so, um, like, kind of wherever I go, I make these kind of networks and connections. And um, yeah, that's kind of just part of who I am. Um, belief is my number four and um, that's one of the things that right through high school I always knew what I believed and um, and I always kind of stuck with that and so there's some really positive things with that um, I think I'd like to think that I, I generally live with some integrity I'm definitely not perfect but I'm pretty consistent I know what I believe and why I believe it and uh, I'm pretty unshakable uh, but the flip side of that is that I, I can be really hard to move on something if I strongly believe it and it doesn't mean that I can't move out of it. It just means that someone has to really, really convince me. Because of the strategic thinking aspect, um, they, uh, their strategy actually has to make sense. So if they think it doesn't make sense to me, I'm never going to shift. And so that can be a really difficult thing. And we'll probably talk about that with Chris Allen and I as well. Because <laughs> uh, that's probably one of the things that makes it really difficult. Because if I disagree, like, yeah, it can take a little bit of time to kind of work around it. The communication thing, it probably just ties in with some of the, the other strengths and that. But um, I think the communication thing's probably been the biggest work on. Um, I think the interpersonal communication, I'm not probably too bad. The public speaking, I used to be really scared of, you know, at, at some point. And so that's definitely yeah. been kind of a growing area. Um, I'm a lot more comfortable in that now, but there's still times where I'm like, oh, I just feel so out of my depth. Uh, when I started at Windsor, for example, I kind of felt like that for probably the first three or four times I was up on stage and I was like, man, I feel really uncomfortable here. Um, but now, like, you know, it's, it's fun where you kind of get into a rhythm. And it kind of nice, goes. nice. Yeah, anyway, I've talked for too long. That's no, what no, I do no. best, right? That's <laughs> ruined communication. Makes with a bit of a, an extrovert. You get too much of talking. <laughs> oh, and you've been in the bubble, so you need to talk more with other people. So that's cool. That's great. Um, Chriselle, I just with 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 your your strengths, like you talked about a couple of them there, um, and uh, one of them is connectedness, um, and I understand that. Um, so connectedness is a strength that basically says God's hands are underneath everything, mm -hmm. and I trust Him for that. I have faith for that. Um, and I was like Chriselle, um, when I first did my test, I was like, don't all Christians have this? You know. Right. <laughs> And don't all people think like this, but they don't, you know, and, and we're <laughs> unique. And um, just in saying this to you that are listening, you know, you will think that people think like you, but they don't. And when you understand how you think and why you think, it'll help you to actually communicate better with other people, even if you haven't got that communication strength. But um, I guess what I'm really interested in, too, is something that we had a look at that last slide with the quadrants is that you guys both have amazing strengths. You know, Chriselle leans towards relational and you lean towards 
influencing with thinking there as well. Um, but you're in the opposite quadrants to each other. Mm -hmm. In the top five, there isn't any crossover. There is an other, and as you get into your top 10, there is crossover, but at the top five, there isn't. What is it like to work in a team with people who think very differently than you and, and their actual, where they want to push and where they want to spend their time and where they, <laughs> what, what they want to talk about is actually different to where you want to push and spend your time and talk about. How does that work? <laughs> I'll, Do you I'll want to go, go first, Chris? Funny. <laughs> well, I'm a I guess. Like that. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, is Ethan going to set the tone of like how honest we can be with this? But, um, <laughs> no, I I think of something actually, and you talked a little bit about it before with Includer with Joe um, Harris. But I remember this conversation last year when um, Jess, Ethan, and I first got together in a team and. Jess has Includer in her top five. Ethan has Includer in his top 10. Includer is actually very low for me. And I have individualization in my top five and empathy. And so I am very much like the one over the 99. And Ethan and Jess are very much the 99 over the one. And so <laughs> it's it's I think that's probably been been the biggest struggle for me is that like opening up more um and and kind of getting that understanding of no we have to care about the one but then you know um both matter so much and we and we both need to be talking about um everyone but those those people on their own as well and so um i think that's one thing definitely um having relational strengths is hard because i i feel like sometimes i take a step back and don't say how i feel about things because i don't want to rock the boat um, and then when I have, it's it's been a like I can't communicate how I really feel about something, or um, not I can't communicate, but yeah, yeah yes. I struggle to because the like yeah I just I guess I can't have that I don't know um, I don't have like my, the irony of like some of Ethan's top five is they're very very low in my strengths in my thirty four I think in my bottom five I have strategic and futuristic and so. Um, that that kind of thinking I really struggle with. I can be a part of the conversation and and be relational in the team, but I think yeah, that's that's definitely been um, a struggle. But then it's opened up my eyes to knowing what we really need as well, and that we're like both of our strengths are really needed in our team, especially to the capacity of how we work, like overseeing um, intermediates, youth, and young adults, and being able to you know see people holistically and in each of that of those areas having having the strategic strengths that he has and and the more like relational strength that I, I have like we need both and so yeah working on like trying to do that better and and growing more and understanding each other more I think is the is the good thing about it. Awesome. It does mean you have to listen a lot more to each other, doesn't it? it does mean <laughs> actually yeah. Yeah. Ethan, what's it been like for you to work with, you know, you're in a, a key members of a team that are different? Yeah, I think there's probably a, probably a couple of different things to it. I'd say um, there's certain things that are really difficult, there's things that are really positive, and there's things just to be become more self-aware about. And so uh, probably the difficult things, um, uh, I would say, is that uh, we, we do think very differently about things. And so when we come to um, and we work, you know, like at least 40 hours a week just in an office together. And then there's probably <laughs> a more, you know, we see each other during the week more than that as well. So we're, we're around each other a lot. And so, and like when you're around someone that much, there's going to be tension at times, you know, and it is going to be difficult. And especially when you're making decisions together. And um, yeah, so like I think for me, probably the difficult thing that I find is that, um, is sometimes I don't understand where Christelle will be coming from. And I think she, she probably feels the same thing for me. And it's and one of the things I've had to learn, and I'm still not good at doing this, I'll, I'll own it, is that <laughs> um, it's not necessarily right and wrong. It's just mm. different. And mm. we need to value both. And so, um, yeah, like talking about that um, example uh, that Christelle brought up earlier about that included thing, um, I, I can remember a number of different events or um, <laughs> ways of doing things. And Christelle would be like over here. And then Jess and I were like, no, like we can't be like that. That's exclusive. And just kind of having that battle. But it's not that Christelle wanted to be 
uh, exclusive that's that she wanted to have depth. And mm. but my thing is, I'm like, but you can have depth and you know, but um, <laughs> so it, it was just we value different things. Um, yeah, I'd say um, one of the other difficult things is that I think. Well, this is more probably probably around the self awareness, is that you tend to understand your own strengths a lot more than you understand anyone else's. Mm. Um, so for me, um, I'm still learning to understand um, and value Chriselle's strengths, and so that's not saying that I don't. It's just meaning that I'm not sure how to utilize that in the team. And even we were talking about this the other day, and and still figuring out like I'm like some are a little bit more obvious, others I'm like oh, I don't know how to tap into that fully but because I've kind of worked on my own and um and I, I operate out of them all the time well it's obvious that and, and Chris Al probably feels the same way about me and so I think that's probably the biggest thing in a team or relationship or friendship is is learn to understand how the other person um yeah uses their giftings and value that and appreciate that um, don't just battle with it because I think it's naturally what we do. We naturally go to the negative and then we're like, oh man, they're just so difficult or they're whatever. We're actually, they just think differently and that's okay. Um, yeah. But yeah, definitely not perfect at that myself. So I'll, I'll, I'll own that. Um, I think that the positives uh, are that we, yeah, kind of like you were saying earlier, we bring diversity of, of opinion and thoughts and skills. And so on a team that, that operates better. Um, we like we often joke around about things that we are good at and things that we aren't so good at with the other person, and um, <laughs> like there's certain things that like oh, I'll definitely own. I'm like, well, it's probably not naturally me, but I've learned some of those skills. But it it's not me, so it takes energy for me to think mm. that mm. way. Whereas Chriselle, yeah. yeah, that's where she could operate like permanently, and she loves it, and it's energizing for her. Um, and that flips around the other way when it comes to strategic thinking and thinking about the future and connecting with people. Like I'm in my element, I'm in my zone. Um, but yeah, so it's just kind of figuring that out. Um, and, and I think the biggest thing is like learning how you can encourage someone else to, I think, grow in their other strengths as well. Um, but also making sure that's not the key focus. So um, for me, that looks like letting Chriselle do um, what she does best. But it's also challenging and pushing and thinking, hey, have you thought about this or have you, you know, and it goes the other way too. Uh, I need to learn to become maybe more empathetic or see everyone as individuals and what they um, uniquely bring to the team. Yes. Um, yeah. yeah, there's all those different things. And it's not that we, I don't do them at all and it's not that Chris Howard doesn't think about the future or um, connect with people, a whole lot of different people. It's just that naturally we're not wired that way. So it's a lot more difficult for us. Um, yeah, hopefully that kind of answers your question a little bit. Yeah, no, that was really, really good. Um, and I think that even that highlights, yeah, that's in a team where they are making decisions about the youth and young adults uh, and the intermediates of Windsor Park, but it also works in marriages, you know. Um, understanding in your marriage you can be, me and my husband, very different. Um, he's international for some strange reason. I don't understand it, but he is, you know. <laughs> Is he a Christian? Is the question. But anyway, just dobbed him, dobbed him in on. Terrible, but anyway, now his strengths are very different to mine. He, he's down the thinking end. He's definitely um, got lots and lots of those lovely thinking strengths. Um, and he also has, you know, the same as Krizel, he has responsibility um, as one of his um, executing strengths, which is another one I love. But when you understand how different you are, it really helps marriage relationships, it helps friendships. Um, and it's not right or wrong. It's not that that person's broken and needs fixing. It's just they're different, you know. So, yeah, it is in, in every aspect of life, knowing for yourself what your strength is, knowing um, what others' strengths are and how to work those together, you know. Um, I was talking with these guys, I think it was Thursday, I was talking with you guys and, you know, um, the fact is that they are so different, they can help each other be better at what they do in ministry just by asking questions. But the funny thing is because you don't think like that, you don't think of asking the question. Um, <laughs> it's a catch-22, so you've got to think about what is it I need to think about. <laughs> but, um, yeah, as they talk to each other, they'll help each other be better at this. And, um, and so that's a great part of the coaching part. 
Um, Ethan, I'm quite keen to talk about the shadow sides. Is there any chance of getting hold of that final slide, or should we just talk about it? Yeah, yeah, I can. I'll sort that out for a second. You keep talking, and I'll get it done in 20 seconds. Okay, <laughs> I'm happy to. Hey, Chriselle, I, I was thinking um, you talk to your friends about strengths quite a lot. Um, are you talking about their strengths? Are you talking about your strengths? What, what are you talking to them about, and why are you talking to them about that? Um, I guess I guess a bit of both, like understanding each other, um, trying to figure out how we're wired. I mean, like I have like I have empathy, individualization and developer. And so all three of those are just like I just want to dive into people and get to know their deepest, darkest, everything. And so um <laughs> <laughs> so when when that comes up in a conversation, I just yeah, it's so interesting to see how different people are wired and and how they work and then when they discover it about themselves they just yeah the yeah everyone lights up so i think that's why i love it is just there's so much discovery it's there's so much yet to be discovered about ourselves yeah awesome and they really do tie in with our spiritual gifts if we understand yeah. um how we're wired and our person what our strengths are and our personality um and that includes myers briggs and other things like that extrovert introvert um, or, you know, organised, um, sort of laid back kind of, um, all those kind of things. The more we understand about ourselves and each other, we can apply our spiritual gifts in the situations that, that we can work best in. So um, I've asked uh, Ethan to check out the slide called the shadow side of our strengths because strengths are awesome, um, awesomely positive about us. They're definitely when we're doing things to our best, but some strengths do have heavy shadow side so or, or blind spots as as they can say with your strength you may have a blind spot so um some of the strengths here's a strength here the first one is uh, called responsibility and that's when you're if you say yes to a task you are going to do it and you're going to do it well and you are going to hold on to that until it's done and you get frustrated when people um say yes and don't do what they say they're going to do you are a responsible loyal owner of a project that you've been given. But the thing with the shadow side of responsibility is that comes with a huge weight. And for some people that weight can get so, so heavy. And responsibility is one of the strengths that can lead towards burnout. Um, and, and so it's really helpful when people with responsibility understand how they think and how they add um, more to the task than they need to and they put more weight on the task than they need to and how God can actually help them to hold that lightly, do it well, still do it to the best of their ability, but do it well, then responsibility be can become a much more positive strength than it can otherwise. Um, there's this gorgeous strength. Um, I, I really appreciate people with this called restorative, and they really like to work with people um, or with things that are broken and, uh, and find solutions and help people get healing or help, um, systems get fixed or help computers get sorted, you know. Um, but someone with restorative is um, can be actually because they look for problems and look for solutions. Can actually the shadow side of that means they can turn on themselves and be really hard on themselves and have really high negative thinking about themselves. And actually, um, it, it's not true. It just means that. Um, they've made themselves the problem rather than um, whatever God has placed in front of them for them to work on. So, um, and when they understand they need to be kind to themselves, not listen to their inner voice, to take it down, to encourage themselves, um, that can be really helpful to understand that shadow side as well. So I was just wondering um, for you guys, what were some of your shadow sides that you got to understand that was helpful to understand and made a difference? Um, I was going to say, like, responsibility, I think, um, and, well, responsibility and empathy, because they're ones that are very, like, weighted. Um, when mm -hmm. I, I kind of, I think I was kind of aware of them before I did the strength finders test, and that um, I, when I was younger, I had an, a tendency to not say no and need to be involved in everything, and I think it sounds like now that I probably still am like that, but I have better at boundaries than I was when I was younger. Um, and so I think it's just always being aware when there's a new task or um, there's a person that is going through something that's really close to me um, 
or anything like that. It's just, it's being aware of those boundaries in myself. Um, mm -hmm. Responsibility, especially just having having certain things that I'll be like, no, that's not mine. Um, that's not mine to hold. Or actually yes. clarifying with people when, when I'm actually responsible for something and when yes. I'm not. And like, is this mine to own? Or is it something that we're talking about as a team? Or... Um, and more just getting clarity. I think clarity is a big thing for me. Um, and with empathy, I think I'm still like, I'm still working on it because I think I can distance myself when I'm not too close to people when they're going through things. But if it's someone who's really, really close to me, I, I really struggle with it. Um, mm -hmm. Just like taking on people's feelings and, and feeling that too much and not mm -hmm. having good boundaries with that. And so still mm -hmm. something I'm working on. Um, but definitely is like, is I find the value so, so worth it in what I do in my job, um, just of those in general, like responsibility. Yeah. I, yeah. <laughs> Let your yes be yes and your no be no. Like I just, um, yeah, that's written on my heart. So. <laughs> awesome. Uh, and I love, um, Chriselle, you know, I coached you years ago now, but just to hear your growth in that, your growth and your understanding around that, I, I'm, I'm celebrating you because you have, have, you know, that was quite painful for you, but your understanding has grown, your boundaries are clearer, you're asking clarifying questions. Yay. And that's why the coaching is important, you know, yeah. so that you can do that. Yeah. But yeah, you serve God in a much more holistic way because you understand your shadow side. So yay. Yay, you. <laughs> I didn't know that. So that's good to know. Awesome. <laughs> Ethan, what about you? Uh, yeah, I'd say there's a number of different things and every strength kind of has something to it. Um, yeah, I'd say belief for me is, has definitely caused a lot of problems in my life. Um, it's also been it helped me in a lot of ways as well. Uh, probably the thing that it's made really difficult is growing up, I think I was really judgmental and I probably naturally lean that way. And so that's something I've really had to work on and kind of develop um, as life has gone on. Mm. Um, yeah, and so hopefully I'm better at that now, but I can remember some pretty kind of key experiences um, that, um, uh, yeah, that I had around that. And But I'll leave that for another time. Uh, I'd say uh, woo as well. I think that's probably had a negative effect in, in certain ways. Um, and I feel like once you get better at using it and you kind of mature and strengthen and you understand yourself better, the shadow sides can kind of, well, not fully mm -hmm. disappear, but you can manage mm -hmm. them. Um, yeah. I think when I was younger, I was very good at connecting with people. And so I had all these networks and it appeared that I had all these friends. Um, but I'd go home at night and sometimes I just feel deeply alone, um, mm. really isolated. And mm. it's kind of weird because no one else would see it uh, mm. because I could go up to 20 different people and, and talk to them in one night and then go home and just be like, oh, no one cares about me, you know? And, um, and just learning that I actually need, as, as much as I love meeting people and um, finding out interesting things about them and talking to different people who, um, yeah, a lot of people wouldn't get the opportunity to just because they're not brave enough to step out. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things I really need is just to have a few key people that I know love me and care about me and that are in my corner. And uh, mm -hmm. often, you know, there's family, but... Also, I think it's really good to have a few friends who know you, who, who kind of have the same beliefs as you um, mm. and who are there to kind of back you up. And, and for me, I, I think, you know, I've got a number of different friends who um, if I'm struggling or if I am feeling isolated, I don't even need to reach out because uh, they, they will sense it in the tone of my voice yeah. when they call me once a week, you yeah. know, or yeah. every fortnight. And, and I think those are the types of friends that you want. Mm. Um, so, yeah, that, that, that would be another thing. Um, yeah, it's, I think communication as well. I was just reflecting on this um, while you were kind of talking about the shadow side. Now, actually, um, communication, um, I, I never really thought about there, uh, there being a shadow side to it before, but one of the things I've realized is often, not always, but often I can be quite articulate in what I say, and I know how I feel and I know what I think, and I can express that. Um, but not everyone can express it really well. And so that can be really intimidating to some people. Uh, if we're working together on a team, like Chris House did it earlier, she might not always have the words to express what she feels. Mm -hmm. uh, to me, like I know what I think and I know why I think it. And so and because of that belief, I'm very strong in that. So mm -hmm. it would be really difficult 
trying to talk to someone like myself and not being able to express that. Um, yes. Yeah, and I can think of, uh, I think about it uh, in a number of different ways, not just in, in my work life, but also my personal life as well, where mm-hmm. I've been able to articulate things and the other person is trying to, but it's just not coming out. I'm not saying that I'm perfect at it. I definitely kind of miscommunicate things and I get nervous too. But yeah, so they're, they're just a couple. Um, mm. Yeah. Mm. Okay, well, that that's, yeah, really, really helpful to know. And I guess, I mean, I'm kind of out of communication stuff at the moment, unless there's some questions that people have. But I guess the, the final point I want to make is that that gift that we have of our strengths, of our, of our gifting or calling in God, of our personality and understanding it, it it's a gift and uh, but we have to open it we actually have to pull that ribbon open the box and have a look at what's inside and we need to actually put the time in we actually need to put the work in uh, to understand ourselves better and that also includes our brokenness as well um, because God um, invitation is for us to become more and more like Jesus and to be transformed by the renewing of our mind and I mean, I know soul tour ties in really well with this as well, as we get wholeness and understand ourselves. All those things work together to help us to be the best that we can in serving God and loving him and knowing and accepting his love and, and passing that love on to other people, you know, and, and showing worth to other people. Um, and so, um, yeah, my invitation is, you know, and my um my my I guess my final points really if unless there's some questions are uh, um do the work you know take the test get the coaching it doesn't have to be with me but I would love to and I have a special rate for Windsor Park people um <laughs> <laughs> um there are no gingsu knives involved though but um the um the, the thing is it, it's reading a book it's re- you know to understand yourself better it's doing the Myers-Briggs t- test and um, it's and it's also like Ethan's been talking about and Chriselle has been talking about showing grace to others because they're not the same as you and that's okay and it's listening and understanding others and uh, and not thinking that they're wrong. Um, Ethan and I both have belief, you know, so I'm like him. I the way I think is the right way, um, which is why everyone shouldn't vote for national. But anyway. <laughs> <laughs> but um, <laughs> but um, yeah, no, we, that, that's uh, obviously just a joke. But um, but yeah, that, it is doing the work, unpacking and understanding how God's wired you. You know, understanding uh, on, on a on a deeper level how amazing God has made you. And that's not just a cliche. I'm not just saying that as a throwaway statement. God did an amazing thing in creating you. Psalm 139. He knit you together in his mother's womb. Ephesians 2, you were created for good works. You know, you have, you're not a mistake. And so, um, uh, yeah, you just need to do the work and and know what that is. And um, I I do agree with those lovely sayings that the only way you discover more about your gifting is stepping into something and trying something out and saying, okay, God, I'm interested in this. Could you use me here? You know, so... Um, that's why I love seeing people taking risks, tying on becoming youth leaders, trying to speak, trying to serve, having a passion for the um, ecology and doing something with that. But, yeah, it is um, discovering more about yourself and then uh, not just holding that on but actually saying, God, use us. God, I'm available. My hands are available. So are there any questions, Ethan, or what's the story, Glory? No, there's not, but I didn't tell people that they could ask questions, so they may have not known. So I'm going to give you a couple of minutes. If you have any questions, you can put them in the comments and I'll ask them on your behalf. Uh, If not, um, Heather may be able to join us in Zoom afterwards, or probably not, I don't know. Um, But you can always ask her at church um, or get in touch with her if you're watching this from somewhere else. Um, Can I just, I'll just say a couple of things about it. Um, Because I know sometimes people are, oh, you know, that's an expensive test or, no, I don't have time to do that, or I'm just too bothered. Uh, I think I, I challenge people on that, uh, you on that, uh, and then kind of encourage you at the same time. As I'm like, for the rest of your life, if you invest in not only this, but in other things to help you understand yourself and other people more, um, you're going to benefit for forever. Like, why wouldn't you want to do that? Um, it it kind of just doesn't make sense to me. Um, it's worth it. 
uh, I will offer to pay for people's tests if you really want. You know, they could get really expensive. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna <laughs> to claim that. But I, I want people to learn and, and grow, right? And so mm-hmm. um, I just really want to challenge you with that. And the other thing is for, for those of you who have done it, um, or maybe you haven't done it yet, but um, you're going to, one of the other things I'd encourage is talk about it with other people. Mm-hmm. Talk about it with other people as much as you can. Try to figure out how they think differently to you and how you can learn from that. Um, I, I talked about my flatmate earlier and how he had positivity. Um, and uh, there's a number of things that I learned off him and there are a number of things that he learned off me. Um, one of the things I learned from him, I'm futuristic. I think years ahead, but I'm terrible at living in the now. I'm terrible at just enjoying um, what is. And so I learned to do that because of him. You know, he really had that influence on my life. But the flip side of that is um, I helped him to start thinking about the future a little bit more, like how to budget and how to plan ahead. And, you know, are you thinking about buying a house? What are you thinking in terms of career? What do you, you know, and so you can use your strengths to help other people, but they can also use their strengths to help you. And so that would be my encouragement. Um, yeah, I, I know there's a question here. I'm going to try to find it. I've got um, it. You've got it. Do you want to ask yep. it for us? Um, Jono, Jono's asking, thanks for asking questions every week, Jono. We appreciate it. <laughs> um, what are your guys' thoughts on working on strengths which are low on the list versus avoiding them? Is there any benefit on working on weaknesses? Yeah, no, I mean, that is the point of strengths. It's that, like, um, you have these strengths that are high get good at those so when we do the coaching we look at how can you grow the strengths that you already have like they're not perfect like I think guys talked about their shadow side and understanding their shadow side but also you can get better at your strengths but um the, and that was my point about the body of Christ really is that you work out of your top 10 you can kind of lean into your top 20 your bottom 14 don't you're not you know so um and that's like Chriselle said that futuristic and strategic are right down the bottom for her she will lean on Ethan she will lean into Ethan she'll ask him questions to help her access those kind of that's how the body of Christ works you know I'm weak here but you're strong so I'm going to lean on you here you know but you're not very good at this part but it's my strength and so you can lean on me you know it sounds like a song lean on me yeah but anyway, um, I would suggest not that I sing but I would suggest that you know you, you don't work on your weak ones that is not the point of strengths at all but you actually celebrate and grow the ones that you already have and the coaching will help you do that but thanks for and the question. just to add to that as well like I think working on your lower ones makes you even more frustrated because you don't understand it so like forcing myself to be futuristic is just not going to get me anywhere in that sense like not not as in like I'm not going to plan for the future I'm not an idiot so I will like think about the future but I'm not gonna you know I'm not going to be super I don't know planned about it because that's just not the way I think especially having connectedness it, it just like is completely opposite to who I am in that in that sense. And so if I tried to be a futuristic person, then it's not going to be who I am. So, yeah, I think that's part of it too. If that makes sense. Yep, that was awesome. Yeah. So my computer glitched out for a second. So if, if you're referring to me, I totally must have. <laughs> um, <laughs> Oh, yeah, we'll it was all about you, Ethan. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> crikey. Um, th- there was one other question that I saw, and it was from Michaela. Um, how do you go about uh, getting strengths coaching? Uh, you, you can get in touch with me, and I'll refer you on to Heather, or just get in touch with Heather. Um, yeah, that's how you do it. Um, and then she can set up a time with you. Do, do you want to speak to that more, Heather? Yeah, sure. I mean, I would love to. Um, obviously, um, I charge heaps less for Windsor Park people because you're my brothers and sisters in my church family, you know. So, um, uh, and if you want to get hold of me, my email is so simple. It's heather at bym.org.nz. So um, uh, please, you know, grab hold of me. I um, I would love, love, love to support you. And, and for me, it's a joy to learn more about my brothers and sisters and how they work and to encourage them. And I, I love doing the coaching. It's a real joy for me. So, yeah, please, that would be great. Cool. Awesome. Uh, thank you for joining me, Heather and Chriselle. 
Um, we really appreciate having you. Um, for everyone else, thanks for joining us as well. Uh, for those of you who are keen, we're going to get on Zoom now. I'll post the link in the comments. Uh, so you just join in on there. It'll be I'll post in the next two or three minutes. And uh, we'll go for an hour. We'll, you can kind of come and go as you please. Um, if the groups get too big, we'll, we'll split them in two, so it's not too intimidating for you to speak. But remember, whether you join us or not, remember the best investment you can make is one in yourself. Okay? Have a good night. Thanks for joining Lovely. us. See you guys. Bye-bye. Bye, guys. Bye.